Back in November, OpenAI had a dev day and they made a lot of announcements with upcoming features and new things that you can do with ChatGPT. One of the things that they talked about was the ability to create GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything with instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. So when this was announced, people who created apps using the ChatGPT API were kind of scared because essentially any user can create their own custom GPT. This meant that it could really impact a lot of those small SaaS companies that were popping up left and right from it. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts and they can give you better control. Of course, this is old news. And if you watch the dev day, you'll also know that after they introduced the GPTs that they were gonna allow people to create, they also talked about a GPT store that they were gonna open up in the near future. You can make private GPTs like I just did. Or you can share your creations publicly with a link for anyone to use. Or if you're on ChatGPT Enterprise, you can make GPTs just for your company. And later this month, we're gonna launch the GPT store. And just today, word on the street is that people have been getting emails letting them know that the GPT store will be open sometime next week. And that's huge news for a lot of reasons. One of them is that this could be a new great side hustle for a lot of people. Just think about back in the day when the Apple store opened up the App Store. A lot of people made a lot of money creating apps for Apple. Well, now you're gonna be able to create GPTs, which will be hosted on this store by OpenAI. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're gonna pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. We're excited to foster a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store. Just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's gonna be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. And not a lot of detail is out about how much people are going to make and the pricing and all of that stuff yet. But it is pretty good news and it's kind of cool to see that OpenAI is trying to do that. There, it also seems that on the flip side, this is going to really put a hurting on a lot of people that created apps using the OpenAI API. Because if you think about it and you want to be a little bit cynical, like I am usually, you'll notice that this is probably a way for OpenAI to reduce the competition with people creating wrapper apps with their API and bring in more people to them directly by having everyday regular users be able to create and customize their own GPTs and then sell them in their app store or their GPT store. So this is pretty interesting and it's gonna be really cool to see what comes with this in the next few months or so. You know, me personally, I have wanted to create a GPT wrapper app like so many people did uh, about a year ago when you know, OpenAI's API was getting popular and a lot of people were creating stuff and a lot of people were getting nervous about it when they announced this and it seems like that time is now. And I don't know if this will still stop people from creating GPT wrapper apps. Even when regular people are capable of building their own stuff, I don't know if people will actually do that. I don't know if people will actually go out of their way to try to create their own thing to solve a specific problem because the truth is that the average user and the average person is kind of, I want to say lazy or doesn't want to spend the time doing that. And many people, if they're trying to have a problem solved, they will usually go and pay for the product that solves their specific problem. But now there's going to be so many of these GPTs that could potentially be free or cost a lot less than a subscription-based model like a lot of these SaaS products that use OpenAI's API do. So maybe this is gonna be a shift in a bad direction for a lot of people who created their own startups with this tool, but we can't really tell just yet. 
I will say that I have a feeling that these GPTs won't be priced very high. I don't know if OpenAI is going to have a subscription model for the GPT store itself. Maybe they'll charge you a monthly fee and then you can get a certain amount of downloads or a certain amount of GPTs that you can use or if they're going to individually price every GPT. I'm sure that big companies are probably already on top of this. During the demo day, they did demo a Canva GPT. Canva has built a GPT that lets you start designing by describing what you want in natural language. If you say, make a poster for dev, a dev date reception this afternoon, this evening, and you give it some details, it'll generate a few options to start with by hitting Canva's APIs. Now, this concept may be familiar to some of you. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. You can keep chatting with this to see different iterations, and when you see one you like, you can click through to Canva for the full design experience. So that just lets you know that they're not sleeping on this. And now that word is getting out that this store is gonna be open next week, I'm sure a lot of more people are gonna be jumping on it. From an average user who's trying to make a few bucks perspective, if you're someone who doesn't know how to code and you've been wanting to try to like do cool things with chat GPT and their API, but you, you know, you're just not technically savvy enough. If you have a subscription to OpenAI, you could have already been creating GPTs. I'm going to show this clip real quick where Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI actually builds one in real time during that demo so that you all can get an idea of what goes into the process of building one of these things and what you might have to do if you want to create one for yourself and potentially sell it on the app store or the open AI store, GPT store. I'm going to go to create a GPT here. And this drops me into the GPT builder. Uh, I worked with founders for years at YC. And still, whenever I meet developers, the questions I get are always about how do I you know, think about a business idea? Can you give me some advice? Uh, I'm going to see if I can build a GPT to help with that. So. To start, GPT Builder asks me what I want to make. And I'm going to say, I want to help startup founders think through their business ideas and get advice. After the founder has gotten some advice, uh, grill them <laughs> on why they are not growing faster. <laughs> All right. So to start off, I just tell the GPT a little bit about, about what I want here. And it's going to go off and start thinking about that. And it's going to write some detailed instructions for the GPT. Um, it's also going to, let's see, ask me about a name. How do I feel about Startup Mentor? That's fine. Uh, that's good. So if I didn't like the name, of course, I could call it something else. But it's you know, going to try to have this conversation with me and, and start there. And you can see here on, uh, on, on the right in the preview mode that it's already starting to fill out the GPT, um, where it says what it does. It has some like ideas of additional questions that I could ask. Um, and <laughs> you know what? I actually, so it just generated a candidate. Of course, I could regenerate that or change it, but I sort of like that. So I will say, that's great. And you see now that the GPT is being built out a little bit more as we go. Now, what I want this to do um, how it can interact with users. I could talk about style here, but what I'm going to say uh, is I am going to upload transcripts of some lectures about startups I have given. Please give advice based off of those. All right. So now uh, it's going to go figure out how to do that. And I would like to show you the configure tab. So you can see some of the things that were built out here as we were going um, by, by the builder itself. And you can see that there's capabilities here that I could enable. Um, I could add custom actions. These are all fine to leave. Um, I'm going to upload a file. Uh, so here is a lecture that I picked that I used to, that I gave with some startup advice. Um, and I'm going to add that here. In terms of these questions, uh, this is a dumb one. The rest of those are reasonable. Uh, and like very much things founders often ask. Um, I'm going to add one more thing to the instructions here, which is be concise and constructive with feedback. All right. So again, if we had more time, I'd show you a bunch of other things. But this is, uh, this is like a decent start. And now uh, we can try it out over on this preview tab. So I will say, um, what's a common question? What are three things to look for? Oops. 
what are three things to look for when hiring employees at an early stage startup? Now it's gonna look at that document I uploaded. Um, it'll also have, of course, all of the background knowledge of GPT-4. That's pretty good. Those are three things that I definitely have said many. All right, so that gives you an idea of how to build a GPT. As you can see, you go in there, you give it an initial prompt, then you can upload specific files and you can create actions and you can also kind of select the capabilities. I'm sure that a lot of the things that you can add to it will grow as these grow and as the OpenAI store grows and more people create more GPTs and this becomes a bigger thing. Remember that this was two months ago at the dev day and at this time this was still kind of half baked it was it was just released and it was brand new uh maybe half baked isn't the best term but it was it was new enough to where it was just the beginning so that's it and the more information in the opening of the store is happening it's happening real soon and that revenue sharing is also going to happen real soon and now this is gonna be a new interesting way for people to make money. And like I said, it could be pretty bad for some people that were already making money with the OpenAI API. And that's just what I wanted to share. I wanted to make a quick video on this because this was you know, news on the street today about OpenAI and I thought that it was interesting because it affects software developers in a lot of ways, uh, like I mentioned in this video with the API and it affects regular people as well who are just trying to maybe get into this stuff and see how they can make some money with it or create tools that can help them with everyday things that they might need. I'm really interested in hearing what everybody else thinks, so please make sure to drop a comment down below. And if you want me to make more videos following this topic next week when the store opens up and people actually start creating these things, maybe we can go in there and explore a little bit together and see what they've got so far and see what some of the prices look like and see if they have more details on the actual revenue sharing and I'll talk about all that stuff. All right, with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.